All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about a shortcut to doing integration by parts multiple times. So sometimes, for example, in this problem, you have to do an antiderivative or an integral, and it needs to have integration by parts two or three or more times. So that can take a while, but there's a shortcut to make it really simple, and sometimes it's called the tic-tac-toe method, and it was made famous by this movie called Stand and Deliver. The idea was actually originally traced back to this paper called Integration by Parts by by Vian Murdy. The Mathematics Association of America has the PDF available online, so I'll put a link in the description box below. And actually, I'm just going to work out some of the problems that is in this paper. As you can see, to do the shortcut, you draw some lines and you put pluses and minuses, so I guess it kind of looks like tic-tac-toe. And it makes integration by parts really simple, so I'll just show you some examples. All right, so let's do this example first. The idea with this method is that it can work for any integral or antiderivative of the form f of s, g of s. And the idea is one side you're going to take the derivative of continuously, and the other side you're going to integrate continuously until the derivative reaches zero, if it can ever reach zero. And then you draw some lines, and that gives you the terms. So let me just do this example. It says evaluate the antiderivative x squared sine of x. So you can easily think that you can get the derivative to go to zero of x squared, but not sine of x. So x squared is the one that you're going to take the derivative of, and you're going to integrate the other one. Then you write them side by side, and like I said, you just successively um, integrate or take derivative of each term until you reach zero. So for the left-hand side, it's going to be 2x, then 2, then 0. That means that you stop um, after three integrations. So the integration of sine of x is negative cosine x, then the integral of that is negative sine of x, then the integral is cosine x. So you stop there because there's a zero on the derivative side. And then what you do is you draw arrows from the first term on the derivative side to the second one on the integral sign. So moving down one row and pointing the arrow to the right. And you do that for as many times as you have rows to move down one. And then the last arrow you just draw is horizontal. And it usually, if the derivative goes to zero, it a point to zero. So then for these arrows, you can write plus, minus, plus, and minus. So you alternate signs and you start with plus. So plus, minus, plus, minus. And then basically the idea is that you just multiply the terms from the arrows and the last horizontal arrow, you actually have to integrate that part. But usually you'll have it as zero, so it doesn't matter because the integral of zero is just zero. So in this example, the last term would be the antiderivative of minus zero times cosine x, which is just zero. So we are ready to write out the answer to the antiderivative of x squared sine of x, which is, so that's gonna be negative x squared cosine x, so multiplying across, then minus negative 2x sine x, so minus a negative, that's plus 2x sine x, then plus 2 cosine x, plus 2 cosine x, and the last term is just 0, so then you can just put plus c for the antiderivative, and that's your final answer. So it makes it really easy to get the solutions for these types of problems. So let me just do another example. So let me also do an example where you do have to integrate the last term because the derivative never goes to zero. So in this case, you can see if you take the derivative of or integrate this term repeatedly, it'll never reach zero, and the same thing for sine of x. So in these types of problems, it doesn't matter which one you consider the integral or which one you want to take the derivative of, you can just pick either one. And the idea is that you do it successively until you reach a point where the horizontal horizontal line, if you multiply it, it will be a multiple of the original integrand. So again, let me just show you what I mean. So let's just take the derivative of the left-hand side and let's take the integral of sine of x. So we have e to the 2x and we have sine x. You take the integral of that, that's negative cosine x, negative sine x. 
if we take the derivative of e to the 2x, that's 2 e to the 2x, then 4 e to the 2x. So if you draw a horizontal line here, you see you have cosine x, negative cosine x times 2 e to the 2x. So that's not the same as the integrand because the integrand has sine of x. But you see here that if you multiply here, um, sine of x e to the 2x is in the original integrand. So this is a multiple. You'll see this is negative 4 times the original integrand. So you can stop here and then you just do your lines like the last time. So there, there, and there. And again, you do plus, minus, plus. So the result of this antiderivative will be e to the 2x, negative e to the 2x, cosine x, minus negative sine, so minus a negative, so that's plus sine or 2 sine x e to the 2x. Then we're going to do plus a negative, so negative the integral of sine of x, 4 e to the 2x. And you can see that when you're solving this problem, you're just going to consider this, so you can pull out the 4. And since this is the same as the left-hand side of the equation, you can move it to the left, so you're going to have 5 e to the 2x sine x equals negative e to the 2x cosine x plus 2 sine x e to the 2x. And to simplify, you can divide 5 on both sides, so you're going to have negative 1 fifth e to the 2x cosine x plus 2 fifths sine x e to the 2x, and that can be plus c, and that's your final answer. So that's the gist of the method. If you practice it a couple of times, you'll see that it really does make these types of problems really simple. So it's used very commonly when, you know, integration by parts is just a small part of figuring out a longer problem. So it'll save you a lot of time if you use it.